Okay, let's look at an example of how to control these lights now using blueprints. So like I said, you can use a level blueprint to grab references to things. Let's go to the top view and look at these two can lights I created. We're getting kind of crowded up in here, so let's see what else. Can we delete something? Yeah, we'll leave these here. Let's move them up here. Sorry, I'm talking to myself a little bit. Okay, let's get rid of these other cans. Let's actually place this. Delete that guy. Move that one into place. Great. Okay. We'll leave that there. All right, now let's control these lights using a trigger box. Okay, a trigger can set off an event. Like I said, we need an event to make something happen. So let's take a trigger box. This is kind of the most basic way to make a event happen. Okay, and let's just place it in our scene. And with the way boxes work, you can, in 414 at least, you can make them any size right here. You don't have to scale them. Okay, make sure that that is something that we will overlap as we're walking. See, it's too low right now, so let's put it up. Okay, now, an overlap means that this capsule here, which has overlap events turned on, whenever it overlaps this object, which also has overlap events turned on, so whenever that one hits that thing, something's going to trigger, okay? So let's go into the blueprints. While, while this is selected, open level blueprint, and we'll say event collision add event or add on actor begin overlap. Okay, so when the overlap begins on the trigger box, something's going to happen. We want to control those lights. So let's select one of those. Can light number two. Open level blueprint. Let's create a reference to can light number two. Like that. Now, on actor begin overlap, let's set the visibility of can light number two. Okay. Set visibility, type it in and you'll see nothing comes up. Because this isn't a light, so you can't set the visibility of a trigger box. So what we need, but we can set the visibility of this can light. So let's try this. Set visibility, the spotlight. Yes, that is the one we want. You can also set the visibility of the other component in there, which is the puck light. Okay, so the actual spotlight component is the one we want to set. Now, what we have is the can light component of the spotlight. So the can light is the blueprint. The component within there is the spotlight. And that's the target. That's what we're trying to affect. We can new visibility, checked. Okay, but something needs to execute it from here to there. So these are the executables, these little triangles here. Execute in, execute out, up here. So on trigger, trigger box overlapped, execute out into this node over here, which sets the visibility of this target, which is our can light number two. Let's see if that works. We still got hello showing up. Okay, there's can light number two over there. Let's see what happens to it. Can't tell anything, can you? Can't even tell if that light was on in the first place because of the way my lighting is set up. Let's do this. Open level blueprint. Let's set visibility of the puck light. Static mesh component. Okay, instead of the spotlight component, we're using the static mesh component. Compile. Let's see if we can make that thing disappear. No. We should be triggering that thing. I think what I'm doing wrong is this. Let's make sure that new visibility is off. I think that means that it will now be invisible. Nope. Not working. OK, and this is a good opportunity to remember something. There's a lot of things you got to keep track of to make all this work. And this is one I always forget. You got to make these things movable. Okay, that, that makes them dynamic so that they can actually be adjusted. And you don't just make it, what I was starting to say is, to make these dynamic, they need to be movable. And you don't just need to do it here in the editor. You need to go into the blueprint, go into the viewport, and you have your two components here. Okay, so this puck we will make movable. 
this spotlight is movable already. Great. Let's set the intensity of that really high. Of course, that will do it on both of them. Let's look and see what that looks like. Okay, that light is definitely shining now. Looks great. The puck is not visible. Let's make sure that it is. In the blueprint. Oh, I see what's happening. It wasn't visible because I actually triggered it. So trigger, and you see that can light turn off, right? Now I haven't made it so that it comes back on. We can do that. But let's actually ignore, ignore let's actually ignore this thing because I don't actually want to turn off the puck light every time. Whoops. Need to keep that can light reference. Let's get rid of our chair reference over here. Okay, let's go back to this and turn on and off the light. Not the actual light, but flip the switch. Spotlight. We need to get our little... Okay, get spotlight. And that gets our spotlight compa component back. Does that. Okay, and then let's execute that one instead of this one. Okay, so that should set the visibility of the can light, which turns it on and off. Compile. Okay, our can light's there. Now let's turn it off. Oh, boo, it did not work. I think I set up the thing a little bit wrong. Open level blueprint. From here, let's recreate this. Set visibility. Spotlight. Okay, now we're now we're talking. Let's do that. Turn that off. Compile. There it goes turned off okay so obviously with new visibility new visibility means on so if that's checked it'll be on if that's unchecked it'll be off okay so what we want to do now is let's create an event for that same trigger box so that the light comes back on when we get set outside of that trigger box okay so on end overlap is the event for that Select it again, go to Open Level Blueprint, go to Events, Collision, On Actor End Overlap, okay? So the actors are the objects in the scene. In this case, it's going to be your character that's overlapping this. But actor is really anything in your scene, not just a character. So execute this time, actually... Yes, we already have the reference to our can light and the spotlight component within that can light blueprint. So let's drag off of that again and say set visibility. And on end overlap, we'll execute to that. Now, so these have the same target, obviously. And this time we will check new visibility. Okay. So the light will only be off while we're standing in that trigger box. It's not super useful, but it does demonstrate how this kind of works. We need to turn off our script for the hello print. Okay. The trigger box is right there. Watch the light on the ground. Off. On. Off. On. Okay. Now, if we were really slick, we would make it so that the material on the static light, on the static mesh component in that blueprint, which would be that little can light puck up there, also turns off when we walk in there. That's a little more involved coding, but that's how that would work the same way we just did this. Okay, so these trigger events um, are kind of what controls everything in your scene and you can see there's some basic little scripts you can do so turning on and off a light I'll show you how to also open like open a door when you walk near it as another useful thing for architecture um, and then I'll show you also how to change materials by uh, setting off some sort of trick event so you can you can uh, shuffle through different materials on your walls or whatever I know that's things people like to do with architecture so we'll look at all those things, and hopefully it's pretty basic scripting for you guys so that if you haven't done coding before, it still makes 
at least a little bit of sense, enough to get you started. And if you have done coding for you, for you, it uh, is probably pretty, pretty basic stuff. It's just a matter of understanding the, the language of blueprints and which nodes you're actually looking for. So hopefully that's helpful. We've got our light turning on and off and uh, on to the next video about blueprints.